We're spending this episode taking your quarantine cooking questions with Samin Nosrat. She's the author of Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat, and the host of the brand new podcast, Home Cooking. Now, back to your questions. All right, uh, we got time for probably a couple more. Let's do Sarah in Los Angeles. Hi, my name is Sarah, and my question is, during this coronavirus pandemic, what are the ingredients that we can freeze? For example, on my infrequent grocery runs, I try to buy a little more than I might need for, let's say, a few days, um, things like garlic and so on. And I have read different things about freezing things like garlic, but I'm not sure what can actually go in the freezer or not. Anyway, just trying to stretch our ingredients and trying not to go out um, unless I absolutely need to. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, I I am absolutely obsessed with this issue of like how to best store and use stuff. So again, you, you, you don't have to go to the store that often right now. Um, I, I would say garlic and ginger, you, I mean, garlic, you just leave out. There's no reason to put in the freezer. Uh, and ginger, you can do that as well, although it, it does a little bit better in the fridge. But aside from those things, like, do you know of like rules, like what can freeze and what should freeze and what shouldn't freeze? Um, I don't know of any like steadfast rules, but I have lots of tips. <laughs> I'm really into this question too. Um, also, I, I always think it'd be really funny if I had a podcast called should I eat that? <laughs> like, <laughs> cause I think people like have this really interesting relationship to expiration dates Yeah, and, you know, are very, you know, understandably worried about things going bad, but I maybe err on the other side, <laughs> but, um, yeah, definitely ingredients that come out of the ground that are cured things like garlic, potatoes, ginger, all that kind of stuff. It will be fine in a cool, airy, dark cabinet. Ginger, you can actually peel and slice and freeze if you want, if that makes you feel better. (laughs) But also, like, it will be fine in your fridge for weeks and weeks and weeks. Yeah. It's the um, much more perishable stuff that I'm kind of thinking about a lot. Like today, in fact, I actually had a very sad moment where I had to throw a bunch of milk down the drain. And I was kicking myself because I was like, man, if I had come to this yesterday, I would have made rice pudding. Yeah. So, (laughs) but um, in terms of, let's see, meat products, to me, the things that are going to freeze more successfully are the things that are less lean, more fatty. Mm -hmm. So um, sausages, bacons, and then all of the things that we would consider stew cuts or braising cuts are going to freeze more and honestly defrost and cook more successfully Mm. because they're going to suffer less from that loss of liquid that's inevitable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in general, for vegetables, uh, what works best in my experience? is lightly cooking it and then freezing it in a single layer until it's solid and then throwing it into a freezer bag. So for spinach, that might mean like sauteing or blanching it, squeezing out the excess water, chopping it up, freezing it in a single layer, putting it in a bag. For peas um, or corn or I don't know anyone who's getting peas and corn this time of year, but (laughs) let's say if if you really like got your first asparagus or any other greens, that's probably what I would do is like cook it really quickly in salted water and then freeze it. Anything else that you're like cooking all day, things like beans and stews, things that have really, really cooked and are saucy in liquid, those are also, I think, prime things to freeze. And you want to always freeze them covered in liquid because that will, will help them defrost better. Yeah, totally. And like, I think about the freezer as a place for, okay, if you buy things frozen, you keep it frozen, right? Mm-hmm. But I want to I wanna prioritize freezer space right now for exactly what you're talking about. Things you, you've cooked in maybe a big batch. Maybe you have a lot of Tupperware. You can portion it out into like one or two servings and then freeze those. So then you can have basically your own frozen dinners, right? So totally. I want to I wanna prioritize my freezer space for that. And totally. Like Produce, yes, uh, most of it is freezable, but often if it's delicate produce, like you said, like cooking it first, just it, it lets it freeze a little better. I think you can correct me on the science of this, but I think what happens is um, in cooking it, you're already kind of like breaking some of the cell structure and the juices that need to come out will come out. And like, um, and so when it refreezes, the freezing action isn't like shredding those As devastating. Cells. Yeah. 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 I agree with you. I have a very, very, very small freezer myself. Mm. So it's very precious, the space. So like last week I made a big, huge pot of chicken stock and there was no way I was going to be able to freeze it all. So I reduced it. I boiled it away by half. Mm. And then I have, was able to freeze that in smaller cups. Yeah. 
And then now when I am using it, I just sort of add water back in. But Sarah, I hope that helps. I do think there is this general sort of feeling of fear and anxiety that everyone has, this kind of panic of running out of food. And I don't think um, for me, myself, and again, like we're all coming at this from different places. If there's any way to let go of any of that fear, I think your day to day experience is going to be a lot lighter. And I think if we all sort of just focus on and really commit to not hoarding, yeah, <laughs> there will be enough for everyone. You know, as long as we're responsible and do our best to, you know, use and preserve and, and not waste what we have, there there should be there should be enough for everyone. Yeah, no, I totally get it. And like I get the urge to panic shop, but everything we're hearing right now is, you know, the supplies will still be there and it just makes it harder for other people if you're buying more than what you need for a couple of weeks at a time. Yeah, um, especially the people who are the most vulnerable, you know, I think they're the ones who get um the shortest end of the stick when other people, you know, take more resources. Yeah. So just like we started talking about, I think taking care of each other and like all of the small ways in which people really are being open hearted Mm -hmm. um, is so inspiring. So it's a nice reminder that we can do that sort of with our food too. (laughs) Right. For sure. Yeah. 